The world was set on fire this weekend with Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes winning the TCU and kicked them bad boys in their teeth, snatching a win from them, in which many out there did not expect for them to get that win in this game. Heck, I was even one of them. I'll even tell you that right now off the rip. But you know what? Looking at the young men that came from those HBCUs that played on that team for Deion Sanders this past weekend, you got to give credit what credit is due. Unfortunately, we have someone out here in this stratosphere that feels that HBCU folks are fools because they did not back Deion Sanders in a manner which they should have when he was at an HBCU. Well, you know what? I got a lot to unpack with that, and we're going to talk about it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in and a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's nothing but positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing. Because I'm like, Coach, don't start, Coach. Just, just let it be, Coach. Just let it be. You know what? I tried my best to just let this go. I tried my best to just overlook the whole, you know, just the conversation of it all. And I'm just, I'm at a point where I'm like, let's celebrate what's really going on here, okay? You had an HBCU coach go to a Power 5 institution. Took HBCU players to a Power 5 institution. Heck, you had some players that was on his HBCU team. Jackson State, that is. Let's say the name. Jackson State, that is, that played for him last year. That, guess what? Went to Power 5 program, and they freaking balled this weekend. But we ain't talking about that. No, we ain't talking about that. We, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about the fact that HBCU fans really watch HBCU sports, have watched Shador Sanders get out there and do what he did this past Saturday. We've seen him do it before in the past. Yes, he's thrown for more yards in this game. Absolutely. The young man threw for, what, 515 yards in this game? The young man threw the ball 47 times, complete 38, four touchdowns for 510 yards. It wasn't 515. I apologize, Shador. I gave you five extra yards. But 510 yards is what he gave me, 510 yards what he had out there on the field this weekend, in which, you know what, everybody that was sitting there that watched this young man play at Jack State sitting like, whoa, this young man is really getting out here balling. But you got another young man that, that, that's playing over there with him as well, Savion Wilkerson. Another young man had 13 attempts, 45 yards, and one touchdown. Let me give you a backdrop on that one. This young man didn't start last season while he was at Jackson State and still ran for 1,100 yards. You talk about a dog, this young man is a dog. Better yet, Let's look at it from this standpoint. How many of you out there understood that when they put this young man in the game, at the end of the game, trying to make sure they secure the game, them coaches trust him with the ball? Because you know what? He wasn't one that would put that ball on the ground. We saw it at Jackson State. We saw it at Delaware State. He was not going to put that ball on the ground. You can trust this young man with that ball in his hands to do what he needs to do. Matter of the story of them all, it's Mr. Travis Hunter. Mr. He is him. Yes, this young man got out there, played 150 snaps. He had 11 receptions for 119 yards while having three tackles and one interception on defense. The kid never left the field. Yes, we've seen this at Jackson State. we see this already, week in and week out, with that young man for one season. Now, let's talk about Shiloh Sanders. He led the team in tackles. Shiloh had 10 tackles on the day. Same type of stuff he was doing at Jackson State. Coming up, knocking your block off, making sure that on you ain't catching no ball. If, if he had a chance to intercept the ball, he intercepted the ball, and he tried to take it to the house. Listen, we understood what Deion Sanders was coming in there with. Did many of us think he was going to have enough to actually complete what he was able to do Saturday? Heck no. Not being the first time he was able to come in there and build a team from scratch in the manner which he did. Yes, he did the same thing at Jackson State. After that spring season, he was able to come in there, get the athletes that he needed to get. Come the fall season, he came back, he made a run for it. No one in the SWAC beat them in two years. No one. Now, let, let, let's keep it a bean here. I mean, it's, it's ironic to me how we have people that think that Coach Sanders was not back. He was, you know, he, he's, all, he's forever going to be beloved, okay? Everybody appreciate what he did while he was over at Jackson State. 
Some of it has been, I'm going to say, embellished a little bit to, you know, make the story be more sensationalized so that, you know, things are looking the way that they need to look. We sat and watched a lot of analysts like yourself, Mr. Stephen A. Smith, who sit here and want to talk so recklessly about what all took place over there at that university. Good sir, you've only showed up one time, one time. And that was when ESPN decided that they wanted to bring themselves out there for a game day at the university. Heck, all of them daggone HBCU deserve to have a game day at their university and in which people show up, faces like yourself who say, I went to an HBCU. I went to Winston Salem State. Show up, brother. Just show, just show up. That's all everybody's asking for. Just, just show up. Don't show up when, 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 when things get a little herky-jerky and crazy out there, you know, where there's a good story to talk about. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a couple more stories for you. You ready for this? Talk about Shane Hooks that was over at uh, Auburn University. With Mr. Hooks himself, he had what? Shane Hooks had two receptions on the day for Auburn University 41 yards. Better yet, how about Kevin Coleman? Who Kevin Coleman came to Jackson State because Travis Hunter, him and Travis Hunter sat down and talked about it. Kevin Coleman said, hey, I'm going to come to Jackson State too. That young man had three receptions for 66 yards for Louisville this past weekend and a touchdown. Better yet, hold on. What about Niles Gaddy? Niles Gaddy had two tackles playing for Missouri this weekend. They had a tackle. That was protecting Shador while he was at Jackson State. Played on TCU. I want to applaud Coach Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes for what they, what they were able to do this weekend. I'm glad to see that they made it into the top 20. The top 20, you know, they're, they're now ranked in the top 20. In one game, they beat TCU by three points, and they are ranked. Hey, guess what? Can't get mad at that. You beat the runner-up in the national championship game, guess what? You got to take a look at that in some capacity. It holds a little weight. It, 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 hold, it holds a little weight, even though they lost a lot of athletes. The message that was given over at HBCU, some folks took that a little different. Did people feel some kind of way when he left? Absolutely. Because they saw, they saw what the world is seeing now. He's forever going to be beloved by everyone that he comes across because that's just the type of figure that he is. Look at everything in a, in a, big, in a big vacuum. You're sitting there, you're sitting there, you're like, wait a minute. What exactly is being missed here? One of your other analysts uh, played football. At a high level in the NFL, when you put out a tweet, been watching this for two seasons, man, where y'all been? We we we've been watching this. We've been watching it for two seasons. All of this, you know, HBCU folks, you know, are fools because we didn't support. Well, I'll say this to you, sir. The same HBCU folks say that you say are supporting are the same HBCU fools that are following this man now that he's not coaching at Colorado, excuse me, that he's not coaching at Jackson State, and he's at Colorado. These are the same fools that sit here and watch your tail day in and day out. These are the same fools that sat and watched you get on your show and you blasted Grammar State's volleyball coach, Chelsea Lucas, for coming in and cutting her team to build her team the way she wanted to. How you talk about that was unfair. That is not right. How do you cut those girls scholarships in the manner what you do. And she lost a job behind that. She lost a job behind it. Everybody out here wanting to blast her, tell about what she did. But Deion Sanders just did the same thing. When he told them students, he told them athletes, he got his bags, Louie. He, he, he got his luggage, Louie. Make sure I, I, I quote him correctly. I misquoted you, Coach Prime. I apologize. But he got, he got his luggage, Louie. Okay, guess what? She probably had her luggage too, which might have been Prada or Gucci. But she got fired, but it was allowed for him to do it. I guess it depends on what conferences you're playing in, huh? Or what, better yet, Power 5 or HBCU. Y'all help me understand. It's gotten so bad with you where it's like you, 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 you're up on this perch and you're throwing your rocks down at the same folks that was in the same, in, in the same halls that you say you come from. And I'm going to tell you now, that perch you sitting up on where you throw them rocks from, your time is coming where you get ready to get kicked off that bad boy. And it's going to be a long fall down when it happens. You may say, oh, it'll never happen because you got everything going on. And your bosses love you. That's all well and great, too. One thing I say is this. I'm glad Coach Sanders has been saying a lot of things that he's been saying in the press, which is some things that he's been saying since he was over at Jackson State. The thing is, he has nothing to lose because he's already set financially. 
when you're dealing with folks that are not set financially, that have an issue with wanting to really speak up from time to time, and I'm not giving them a blanket to say that it's okay for them to be the way that they are, because everybody should always stand on principle. But I would say this, it's going to come a point in time where the narrative that everybody's throwing out there right now, look at what Coach Deion Sanders has done as far as with this team to go in and beat TCU, in which he hit the transfer portal and brought all those athletes in, what happens when the team doesn't win week four? What happens when the team start going, when they go on a losing streak? What happens then? Oh, the, 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 the season is already so much better because he beat TCU. We, hey, he'll come back and get him next year. He, he needs to have another recruiting class, and then, you know, he should be fine next season. Is that really going to work? Or will people start turning? I give Shannon Sharp a little credit. Where he, he stated that, you know, they still need a little work. But my question to you is, and a lot of you other analysts out there, when are we going to start talking X's and O's and not just who's the favorite guy? Who, had, who has the most juice as far as what's really going on? See, we tune in for sports, but we get foolery. The fool ain't us. We're not the fools because you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day having to deal with that. HBCU folks. I'm still out here supporting this man. He was never going to be a lifer at an HBCU college coaching football because that was not where he wanted to hang his hat at in the end. And many of us didn't understand that in the beginning, but as more and more people got to talking, we begin to understand exactly what's going on. And I'm going to say it's a lot bigger than what you think. So while you're sitting there skinning and grinning, about what he was able to do and you want to draw us in to come watch and see what more you have to say. I'm done with what I, I I'm done with where I, I'm done with try. I, <clears throat> it's all good. <laughs> why you try, why you, why you're trying to find ways to get us to, you know, draw in to more, draw more and more into what you're talking about. You're still losing the battle. Because you come from an HBCU, I don't see you extending your hand doing much of anything. Not outside your comfort zone, but it's okay. Deion Sanders was able to do something outside of his comfort zone, which is something that you're never able to do. And yeah, he doesn't need me or you to come stand and fight for him because he can do that on his own. But one thing I'm beginning to really understand being in this space of a creator is that we have tendencies as far as trying to do more when it's totally unnecessary. And in this instance, calling HBCU supporters, HBCU supporters fools because you feel that they didn't appreciate them, I don't get it. But you got my attention. And guess what? Now I'm going to turn the lights off on this thing because I don't give attention to garbage. But I'm going to go ahead and keep on moving on. And like I said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I had the Grammar State video coming. The video is probably going to be out of order. My apologies. I'm going to go ahead and get up on out this thing because this, this here is chaotic. Like I said, we got good stuff going on in this HBCU sector. Colorado's doing great stuff over there with Deion Sanders. Congratulations to Deion Sanders, his coaching staff. Matter of fact, you didn't even talk about the coaches that came with him from Jackson State as well as from Mississippi Valley State. We, we, we didn't, you didn't even bring them up. He got pretty much a daggone staff full of HBCU coaches over there. But coach going to go ahead and get up on out of here. And uh, like I said, we're going to get back to this HBCU content. But I, I had to let that one go because I'm not one that's going to sit up and talk about what's going on with Colorado all the time. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and get up on out of here. But until next time, be the one and lead.